today we are joined by Sub Lieutenant Isabel Yan, a mechanical engineer submariner. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. I was just saying that's quite a mouthful. <laughs> sure is. Thanks for having me. So maybe you could start off by explaining to us all what is the role of a mechanical engineer submariner and what is it that you do? Sure. So the marine engineer on board is really the technical expert on board the submarine. So we're responsible for the maintenance and the repair of the platform. So that means we're in charge of systems like propulsion, power generation, hydraulics, aircon, so everything that the submarine needs to stay at sea and keep us alive at sea. So we're in charge of a team of marine technicians who maintain all of that. So you entered the Navy as an undergrad, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about your experience. How, how did all of that happen and go and what was that like? Yeah, so the undergraduate sponsorship program is a really awesome entry pathway. So I got to go to a university of my choice and I got to go to uni and I was getting paid. I had rental allowance and I had my degree paid for. So I got to have a really great work-life balance and I got to develop um, professional both in the civilian world and the Navy world. So that was a really awesome experience. That is like the best ever. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, so why did you choose um, to become a mechanical engineer? Have you always wanted to do this sort of thing like when you're at higher school? Is this, was this the path that you could always imagine yourself doing? Yeah, so I always enjoyed STEM subjects, so science, technology, engineering, maths. And uh, when it came to going to uni, I think I wanted to do something a little bit more practical, a bit more hands on. So mechanical engineering was like the natural choice. So I actually studied naval architecture, which is one of the disciplines within mechanical engineering. So it's it's a really good challenge and I loved it. Yeah. Oh, wow. How cool. Um, so you're the first in your family to join um, the Australian Defence Force. What motivated you to join the Australian Defence Force and why did you choose the Navy? And then also, what did they all like think about your career choice, your family? Yeah, sure. So um, I always wanted to do something a little bit more exciting, something I could give back in. And I guess the expectation for me was always to go into academia, go to uni, get my degree, then do a PhD or something like that. But I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be stuck behind a desk my entire life. And I wanted the opportunities that the ADF kind of stood for and all the life experiences and cool things they did. And then I guess in the Navy side, I just thought ships were really cool. So that's why I chose the Navy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> And then I guess my family and friends never really thought that I'd choose a Navy, but they're really supportive of it and they really like to see me in a really good environment, something that I really enjoy. So yeah, they're really supportive. What did they think when you first turned up in your cool uniform? Were they like, oh my God, this is awesome. Yeah, they were. <laughs> um, so what do you love most about being a submariner? What excites you the most about the future of the Navy? Yeah, I think um, being a Samaritan, it's being in that small team environment, it's it's that team that becomes your family and that sense of community, that's something I think all Samaritans can attest to. Um, for me personally, a future in the Navy, it's, um, I'm working towards my dolphins, so that's what we call um, when we qualify as a Samaritan, we get our badge, which is two dolphins, so that's something coming up hopefully in the near future, so I'm really excited for that. And how do you feel about the exciting future of engineering in submarines? Yeah, so it's going to be a very exciting time for engineers and particularly submariner engineers with our new nuclear powered submarines that Australia is going to be getting. So it's certainly a very exciting time and there'll be heaps of opportunities to work in nuclear propulsion, physics, shipbuilding, and hopefully there'll be heaps of opportunity to learn and develop new skills from our American and uh, British nuclear engineers. So that's really exciting in the future for any um, engineer in the Navy. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so can you tell us a bit about some of the training you've already received um, with the Navy and how has this better prepared you to become a mechanical engineer submariner? Yeah, so um, Navy trains you extremely well to do your job. So I'd say my training has been in three phases so far. So my first phase was new entry officer course. So that's for six months and that's your initial military training that teaches you how to, you know, live and work in the military. Um, the next phase was engineering officers application course. So that's another six months and that teaches you general Navy and maritime engineering. So it brings um, everyone who comes from different educational backgrounds up to the same level sort of thing. 
And then the final phase, which is where I'm at currently, is your submarine specific training. So that's here in HMS Sterling. And that teaches you everything submarine. So all the systems on board, what it looks like. And we have some really great toys that, that we use. So we have something called Boat 7. That's a simulated version of the submarine. So you get to use a little PlayStation controller and get to walk all around the submarine. So you know the layout of the submarine before you ever step on board one. We have really good simulators so you can feel what it's like to live and work on board the submarine. So that really sets you up to uh, get your dolphins Wow, what a cool experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why did you choose to become a mechanical engineer in the Navy over being like a civilian en mechanical engineer? What was it that really stood out to you um, about the ADF? Yeah, so I think it was the opportunities in the ADF and it was a chance to do something a bit different, something unique. And what really excites me are all these advanced systems that you get to work on at such an early stage in your career. And that's such a great challenge to do. And it's not being stuck in that office job forever. And we, uh, in the Navy, we have so many opportunities for professional development, whether that be getting your chartered engineering status, joining professional, like having professional memberships, uh, doing further education and every day is just different and it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it sounds absolutely awesome. Um, and you touched on it a little bit earlier, saying that when you join the Navy, you gain an extended family and that's that sense of belonging. It's even more profound in the submarine force. I can imagine um, that would be the case for sure because you'd be working so closely with each yeah. other. Yeah. So what's, is this, is this been something that you've experienced and, and how, how, have you, how have you found all of that? Yeah, so it's certainly true. And there's very much a sense of belonging fostered within the Navy, because like you said, we work together and live together. And the submarine community particularly definitely welcomes you and really supports you because it's very much part of culture because we're all together in that boat together and you end up being that family and we really cherish these bonds. And I have mates that I consider as family who are like spread all over Australia and the world because of the experiences I've had in the Navy. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so tell us about the first time you dived in a submarine. What was that like? Because I'm just trying to imagine it now and it's it's really hard to imagine what that would be like. Yeah, like um, I was so excited that first time I got to dive at the biggest grin on my face. And what's really amazing is all that energy in the control room as everyone's focused and the training kicks in and then we get to dive and bone. And it's, it's just really hard to describe, but it, it's just a really awesome feeling that first time you get to dive. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's something that I would really love to do. And I just don't yeah. think that I would ever get the opportunity to go in a submarine. That's why I think that this is the coolest job ever because yeah, it's really like, is. who else gets to do this really cool stuff? It's like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, so what's it like? living and working in a submarine like and how big are they like give us a bit of an understanding of what what this sort of looks and feels like when you're living and working on one of them so it's certainly a smaller working environment than like a normal office job yes. but it's, it's not like you're packed in it's not like claustrophobic or anything you do you can have your own space and there are heaps of places to go to be by yourself or something so um, submarines work on what we call a two watch system. So about half the boat's up at one time. So we take turns being on and off. So we do six hours on watch, six hours off watch. So you kind of get into a bit of a rhythm and a bit of a routine. So then you, you still have time like to relax and to chill and to exercise and all of that. So you get really used to it after a while and you don't notice that it's actually that cramped up. Anyway, it's not too bad actually. And so what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Well, I love hanging with my family and friends, chilling out, going to the movies and all that. Um, for me, I really like ice skating, so I do that a lot. I like um, painting a lot. I like playing my guitar. So I do have like, there is a good social life outside of Navy and you do have time to uh, invest in your hobbies and your interests. So it's pretty good. That's good to know. Yeah, I guess maybe a misconception might be that like you're stuck on campus and you can't, you know, go and see your friends and family, yeah. but that's not the case. Not the case. It's not like it's boot camp, like 24 seven. You do have time to have a life outside of Navy and to really enjoy life as it is. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, and I have heard that you interviewed for the Rhodes Scholarship. What is that? Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so it's um, one of the oldest, or well, it's actually the oldest postgraduate scholarship in the world. So it's for um, any postgraduate degree you'd want to study at the University of Oxford and they pay for the whole thing, yeah. Oh, cool. So when do you find out about it? Uh, so we actually found on the day I interviewed a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, I wasn't successful, but it was still a really good experience. Amazing. Cool. Oh, well, something for uh, students out there who are listening to Strive For. And um, yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate your time today, Isabella. It's, um, Thanks for having me. It's a really cool job you've got. <laughs> yeah. And I hope we've inspired some more young people out there to uh, to consider this as a career choice. So um, we appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you.